Well, well, when I talk about Gonski, I actually link it to the national partnerships. And I do that because if you think about the national partnerships money, and my school received that for four years, um, that money was in effect uh, the federal government saying, well, teachers in low SES schools or schools with, with additional needs have been saying for years and years and years, it's all about the resourcing. What we need are more resources. And I think that really what the federal government said was, well, if that's what you've been saying and that's what we've been hearing for decades, let's give you some extra money. You know, a substantial amount of extra money and let's see if it does make a difference to the learning outcomes of, in, of students in schools. So when I talk about the outcomes that we've had, it's kind of like, I feel like the national partnerships was the preparation money. And I believe that I can make a whole range of claims around improved learning and improved outcomes for low SES kids as a re result of that additional funding over a period now of about five or six years. Lots of people who aren't in education think that we'll put in a little bit of extra money and they'll do a program and something will change. And the truth is that change in education is, is really slow. You know, if you want to make it stick, it's really slow. And so you've got to persist with your programs. So the sorts of things, we've done lots and lots of different things. Um, we, we ran for, for five years, we ran a program that we called Classroom Development, where we had designated six teachers in the school. They had nominated themselves. We gave them additional professional learning and their job was to work collaboratively with their colleagues on a voluntary basis in their classrooms to change practice. Not, you know, sometimes when you say to improve practice, people mm. think that the practice was bad. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, but it was that idea of, you know, I, I don't know anything much about using technology in a really creative way in my classroom, but this classroom development person does because they've had all this additional um, professional learning. So I'll get them to work with me on a unit of work so that I can start to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. So that was the purpose, was to, was to create collaborative interactions over a sustained period of time between teachers so that they could learn off each other. Mm -hmm. We relieved those teachers who were the classroom development officers for uh, one line. So that they had the equivalent of a head teacher load and we paid them as head teachers. Mm -hmm. And we did that because we, what we were asking them to do was to take a real leadership role. There was going to be a lot more work in it than the six periods that they had. And we had to acknowledge that in some way. So we were able to do that. That worked really well. The other things we did, we did a lot of work around infrastructure because schools, my school's 40 years old and everything was had it. <laughs> So we did things like we upgraded the um, technology provision in classrooms. Some people don't like interactive whiteboards. We put one in every permanent room and we put a lot of money into training our teachers to use them well. Mm. So each teacher had about 30 hours of professional learning around the use of interactive whiteboards so that it could be, they, the technology could be used in a, in a seamless way in their classes. And so they were, they were able to change their, you know, really upgrade and uh, modernise their mm. teaching through the use of that technology. And we've been very happy with that. But as I said, you know, um, nothing much had been done to it because there's never any money. Mm. And we were able to create some spaces, upgrade some spaces. And what we found about that was that the, the students see it as honouring them and when they've got good tool, tools to work with, then it's much easier. Um, we've, you know, simple things like there's no, there's no graffiti mm -hmm. because the kids look after what they've got because, mm -hmm. they, because it looks good, it works well for them and they see it as an advantage. And now we're able to build on that um, through continued big professional learning. I don't think any teacher ever has enough professional learning. So, so we've got a real culture of learning in the school and a very open culture of learning and that's really important. We're also able to 
progressively upgrade infrastructure in the school, again, to create those modern learning spaces for mm. students. There's a lot of research around that talks about the relationship between student learning and the space that they're in. And just like we all like to live in a nice house with our things around because it makes us feel like we belong, students are the same. So it's important to have those spaces as you, as you want them. Look, I think um, the professional learning is really important. The other thing that's been really key has been we've done a, a lot of work over the last five years at St John's Park around leadership development with the students. And what that's, you know, old-fashioned things, I guess, like SRC, there's about 200 kids in my school involved in SRC. We've got a house system that probably involves another 100 kids. We do high resolves and ACBN and all sorts of different explicit leadership development programs with our students. And I'd have to say that I, th that I think that it's actually been really key in the improvement in our students' outcomes, mm. that explicit leadership development, because it, that's all about voice and agency. And when you give people voice and agency, all aspects of what they do tends to come together under those things. So, you know, when I talk about our results, I'm talking about the culmination over that period of time. And that's why I think I can claim the results mm. are directly related to the improvements in, in teachers' um, teaching and learning practice, improvements in the, in the tools that they have, but also building that resilience, agency and voice of students all come together to provide us with these exceptional um, imp improvements, their improvements in learning outcomes at the school. Mm. The school's always achieved really well. You know, there's never been an issue about how well it's achieved. But if you look at our value added, for example, from seven to nine and then from nine to the HSC, St John's Park High with 61% of our kids in the bottom quartile, SES quartile, and more than 90% non-English speaking background has, is in the top 5% of value added of, of schools in New South Wales. Mm. Top 5%, mm. amazing. Mm. When you look at our you know, other results like our HSC, result, our HSC results, comprehensive school, five kids with attars over 99, 99, 15 over 90. These are these are, are results that are way outside. Ninety one percent retention, ninety four percent attendance. These are way outside mm -hmm. anything that you know anything that we should be doing mm -hmm. on based on our demographics. Mm -hmm. And so I would claim absolutely that that additional funding has directly contributed to this school being able to achieve these outcomes with these students. And it's gone, and in, into the future, as that Gonski money builds, and we more and more level the playing field, those kids from that low SES school will be able to show what they actually can do. Mm. You know, like we're not there yet. Um, you know, we've had a bit of a an experimentation. We've built some things that we know, some programs, some approaches that we know are producing results. And as that money becomes available and we're able to do more of those things, then I believe we will start to see students, our low SES students, really achieving what they ought to be. And what it will do, you know, if you, if you just had our school against, against, you know, the sort of average, I suppose, what our school would show would be a closing of gap. For me, it's the first time in my career that we've actually, and this is my 37th year, it's not like I've been around for five minutes, it's the first time in my career that we've actually had the money to do the things we know we need to do. It's the first time in my career that we haven't had to put a Band-Aid on here and, you know, plug a hole there. It's the first time in my career we can say, this is what these students need and we can actually provide that over time. 
without saying, oh gosh, you know, this is DSP and, and you know, we're, only, we're getting 100, you know, like, the mad things that we had to do, that, not that they were mad, that's, that's the wrong way, to, but they were always band-aids. They never fundamentally said, we need to rethink the way we do school for a whole range of kids. You know, one of the things we do, and it's funded by this additional funds, is we do something called big picture education. Now we've been doing it with our special ed kids for about four years now. Traditionally, kids in special education in the IM class leave school and they go and they might work in a, a community um, facility for disabled people. Or they go home and they watch TV with mum. That's what they do. Last year, so this big, this big picture education pr uh, approach that we use, the students are explicitly taught work skills in workplaces. And then they do structured internships. They're not sweeping floors and they're not making cups of tea, but they do structured internships in workplaces. Last year, seven students left year 12, special ed, and six went to work in real, like in proper, not, that's a really bad way of putting it, but in paid work. So one of the boys who was a refugee from Iraq, he now works in a, um, um, what do you call them? He now works in a um, reception centre, you know, like a bridal reception centre, convention oh, centre, yeah. I suppose. I went to a wedding there recently. Out of our IM class, he's running the floor. He's the one who's organising the people waiting on tables. He's the one that's making sure that that waiter over there is filling the glasses. He's the one making sure that the food's there. He's not bringing the food out and putting it on the table out of an IM class. Another boy was working for at Woolies on his work, work experience slash internship. The manager said, I want you to apply for a job and he works there now permanently. Like, we didn't have the resources to do that prior to having this additional funding. And, you know, whilst I'm really proud of kids getting fabulous attars and doing marvellous things, I'm actually more proud of what our special ed kids are achieving, you know, of our achievements around special education. I'm really proud that a kid who, whose parents decided they didn't want him in an IAM class and put him in the mainstream, that we could provide him with enough support that he could get a higher school certificate in his own right. Not a life skills higher school certificate, a higher school certificate in his own right. That's what, that's what this resourcing can do. Because it's not just about the high flyers. Mm -hmm. It's about every kid. And, and you know, my, my view of the world is you look after your weakest and the other, other, other will work. I'm very proud of that work. But I don't do the work. I mean, that's the other thing that people have to understand. I don't do it. My staff make me look good. I might give them some ideas, but they're the ones who carry it through. They're the ones who make it happen. And the kids come on board. So there's lots of things to be proud of. And, um, and the funding. Not having to do that scrimping and saving. You know, being smart, but having enough money to be really smart. It's great.